Hello, this is Faith at Faith and Books, and I am proud to report that I finished Bleak House at about 11.25 p.m. on Halloween night. So, um, so I did it. I managed to read Bleak House, all 989 pages, in the month of October. So that is a great victory for me because... For many, many years, I had a mental block about Charles Dickens. I had read A Christmas Carol, uh, Great Expectations, Tale of Two Cities, and David Copperfield. I think I'd read all those before I graduated high school. And I never expanded. I never read more Dickens. I think one time I started to read Oliver Twist, but I got afraid because I was afraid it was going to be too anti-Semitic. And I can be super sensitive about that. And so I abandoned it after just a few pages because I had heard from somebody about Fagin and how he's represented. So, um, so I just ab abandoned Oliver Twist. And uh, I don't think I tried anything again until Bleak House. And I happened to catch the miniseries, which I think came out in 2005 or something. And I went out and bought the book and thought, I'm going to read more Dickens. And... It's been sitting on my shelf since then. So there's like 15 years that I've been meaning to read Bleak House. And I just had it in my head that I just couldn't read Dickens. And I finally did. So it's really, really quite a major <laughs> breakthrough <laughs> for me. A pathetic little breakthrough. Um, but I, I really enjoyed it. Um, let's see. We had a really, really nice Halloween. And it was much better than our usual Halloweens, and for me personally. And I think it's because it was the first Halloween in a long time where I wasn't left at home to answer the doorbell while everyone else went out. <laughs> Instead, we had a party in the house, and it was really fun. Um, and I'd sort of given up the idea that I was going to be able to finish Bleak House in October because I'd had two really bad reading days where I barely read anything. Um, on Thursday or Friday. Just life got too complicated. I had migraines, stuff like that. But then on um, Saturday, which was yesterday, Halloween, I really thought, oh, this day is going to be so busy. I'm not going to be able to um, to read anything. But I, I guess what time do we go? It was. I think I was in bed. It was 10 o'clock. And I said, I'm just going to read as much as I can till midnight. And I finished at 11.25. So, I really, really enjoyed it. I do think, though, it could have wound up a little bit quicker than it did. I, I felt like Dickens was kind of dragging it out at the end there, and he was trying to tie up all the loose knots, and some of them really weren't that important. They really didn't need to be tied up. Like, I didn't need to hear about Mr. Guppy again. Um, you know, some of the minor characters who were a little bit unsavory, um, he, you know, felt compelled to wind up their stories, tie up their stories neatly, and uh, I didn't think it was worth uh, the verbiage. Um, and but I, on the other hand, even though it is long, and sometimes he, he, it, he overdid it. But I really liked the idea that he could really take his time and paint characters and use a lot of rhetorical devices and get poetic and sort of high flung and tongue in cheek and just so much personality just oozes out of the book, you know, oozes in a good way. It just sort of, uh, it's very, it's very vibrant. He writes in a very vibrant way. Um, with, you know, just all sorts of interesting characters with interesting quirks and, and turns of phrases and that sort of, sort of thing. So I, I like the long, um, you know, the, uh, how some people I know are daunted by, by the, how thick the books are and everything. And I guess that they were written as serials. Um, but I kind of think that's a good thing too. I mean, it's got its pros and cons. Um, and I really, you know, he has a warmth to him that uh, when he is exploring relationships, there's really a warmth there that I really enjoy. And I think, has, you know, has a lot of wisdom in it. And I like the way he explored. I really think he was exploring a lot about parenting in this book and, and uh, lots of other things, too. But just the whole relationship between Esther Summerson and her mother and her god mother or whoever she is 
uh, I don't want to say, no spoilers. Um, and then just John Jarndyce is a guardian versus even a suitor, um, and, or a suitor meaning a lover in the Victorian sense, not a suitor as in the, the law case. Um, and uh, just uh, Mrs. Jellybee and Caddy uh, and even Esther and uh, like Charlie and Charlie with her younger siblings and you know, even really, really minor characters like Gridley and the way he sort of looked after the um, Caddy's younger siblings, whatever their names were, Tom and somebody else. Um, the way Joe didn't have anyone to look after him, it was really hit or miss. Um, Mr. Snagby's somewhat, but he got in trouble for that. Um, and uh, Dr. Woodcourt at the end. Uh, but Joe didn't really have family. And then even at the very end with poor Sir um, Deadlock, um, who sort of, his family turns out to be these faithful servants in his household, even though he's so proud of his lineage and his family ancestry and name and all that. But who winds up really being his family? It's these servants. So... I, I thought it was a really interesting exploration of family, especially parenting or, or being in that position of, of, of comforting and, and protecting and guiding and taking care of somebody else. There's a lot of that going on. So it's, it's a really interesting read. It's got a lot in it. It's got spooky stuff in it. It's got a murder in it. It's got lots of interesting characters, very Dickensian characters like uh, Mr. Tulkinghorn, the, the evil lawyer, and um, Mr. George, and oh, just so many, so many. Um, so I really enjoyed meeting all those characters and uh, just a, a really nice, it's a, what they used to say, a thumping good read. It's just a thumping good read. Um, I do think though he could have wound it up. It was like he started this huge thing <laughs> with so much mass to it that it it was hard to slow it down to stop and get to the end and so I think he took a little bit too long to wind down or maybe it was just that I was anxious to finish it uh, within the month of October and thought it dragged a little bit there at the end but there were you know I mean there were a couple of like big things that happened at the very end for sure um to major characters um, but somehow they felt like a, almost like an afterthought um, to some of the others that happened earlier. So, I don't know. It, it's like a, a real red tapestry. There's just so many characters, so many things going on. So like a tapestry, just all the threads make up this one, you know, wonderful story. So I enjoyed it very much. And now it's November 1st. And it's, you know, if you're if you so celebrate, uh, happy All Saints Day. And I'm going to get started on my nonfiction. And uh, the first thing I'm going to get started on is this. I'm going to start reading about um, permaculture. So I think I have to read seven chapters each week, and then I'm going to report on them in 10 minutes or less. That's my goal. So, all right, well, take care, and I wish you well, and I will see you later. Bye.